Hey guys, this is Matt for cgtarts.com and in this quick tip tutorial we're going to be taking a look at putting together a layered material within the Maxwell Material Editor for Maxwell Render. Now there are already a couple of tutorials and bits of information available on the internet about uh, kind of how you would apply decals or graphics to your models in Maxwell Render. However, it's still a question that I get asked quite a lot, so I thought that I'd put it together uh, a nice quick tutorial for us here. Now, this isn't a uh, beginner's tutorial necessarily, it does assume a little bit of knowledge about how the material system within Maxwell Render works. Uh, I kind of assume that you already know how to import images into different channels within uh, the material editor, and also um, kind of how the layer system over here on the left works, although I will be going over a little bit of that. So, without further ado, as you can see, I've basically just opened up the material editor and there are no layers in here currently. So the first thing we're going to do is create a nice base for us to apply some decals to. So we want to create a nice kind of red, blurry plastic material. So I'm going to come up to the wizard, I'm going to choose plastic. Now the shininess 30, that sounds about right for us. Now the roughness 0, that's a little bit low, we kind of want a blurred reflection. So I'm going to up this to about 15 and click OK. And I'm going to choose a nice reddish kind of colour for us, kind of like a reddy orange kind of thing. And we're going to make sure that our RGB values don't go above about 220, 225. Uh, within Maxwell it's kind of a good idea to keep them below that range, otherwise you start uh, kind of adding a bit more noise into your image. So 219 is just at the top of kind of that range, so that's absolutely fine. So I'm going to click OK. I'm going to replace the current material and you can see that it adds in the layers over here on the left. Now the first thing we want to do is basically render this and see what we've got. So I'm going to click the little green arrows there to render and you can see that it slowly renders out our red material. Now this is uh, absolutely what we want. We've got a little bit of a kind of blurry reflection going on in here and the colour looks great. So the first thing I'm going to do is come up and save our material. So I'm going to save MXM. I'm going to save it within this MXM folders that I've created and I'm going to call it My Layered Material and click Save. And The reason I'm doing that is basically if uh, Maxwell Material Editor crashes for any reason it's always great uh, to kind of be able to come back to the last thing that you did and it, at the moment it is perhaps a little bit more crashy than I'd like uh, on my Mac, although they are shooting out updates fairly consistently, so fingers crossed that will get sorted soon. Now I'm going to be using the uh, shortcut for save, which is just uh, Command S, and it's obviously Control S on Windows as well, so I'm just going to be hitting that basically whenever I make a change. Now with that done, I'm just going to draw your attention to one aspect of the layers we just added in, and that's this right-hand column. Now you can see that this base layer group has an N next to it, whilst the top coat layer group has an A next to it. But what exactly does this N and A mean? Well, if I click where it says top coat, you can see that the layer blending mode within the layer group properties is currently set to additive, and as you might have guessed, that's what this A stands for. Now the base group, if I click on that, has a layer blending mode set to normal, and that's what the N stands for. Now we only have these two layer blending modes set to us, normal and additive. So what exactly do they do? What's the difference? What's the point of setting it to additive? Well, I'm going to first of all click on the top coat layer, then I'm going to right click on this preview and click store. And what that's going to do is store this image as well as all of the settings associated with that render. And this is going to allow us to compare a couple of settings in a second. So with that stored, I'm going to go to the top coat layer properties and change the layer blending from additive to normal and then re-render. The first thing that you'll notice is that we can't see any red whatsoever. We're only seeing a black shiny material. And in fact, that black shiny material is what we have set up in the material properties or the BSDF layer for this top coat layer group. So if I click on that BS BSDF layer, sorry, you can see that I have a black material colour set up and the roughness set down to 15. And so all we're getting is this black shiny metal material. So where exactly has our red material gone? Well, when things are set to N or a layer blending mode of normal, you can basically think of these layer groups in this left column as layers of paint on a ball. So this sphere in this preview is being painted once and then the next layer is being painted over the top and then the next one painted right over the top of that. So each layer is essentially covering up the one below it. So in this case, this top coat layer is completely covering up the base layer which is giving us our red colour, so we can't see any of it. 
When the layer is set to A, or additive, however, instead of being a layer sitting on top of what's underneath it, they kind of mix together. And I can show you this now if I right click on this preview and click store. Then I can use these arrows to switch between the two previews we've done so far. So you can see on our red ball, you can see the shininess that we have from this top coat layer applying it to the base coat, which is just the red diffuse layer. Now, if you watch this reflection here as I flick through, you can see that on both layers, both material swatches, they're essentially the same. They're just being mixed together on this red version. And it's this additive and normal layer blending mode that is going to allow us to go in and add a brand new decals layer sitting right on top of our red plastic. Now that we're happy with our red plastic, I'm just going to go in and fold up both, both of these groups in here. Then I'm going to right click and add a brand new layer for our decals that's going to sit right on top. So remember this works from the bottom up. So our decals layer is currently sitting right on top of our top coat and our base layer. And as you can see by default it's set to N, which as we now know means that it's just going to be painted right over the top. It's not going to be mixing in at all, it's just going to cover up the red plastic material beneath it. And if I click render you should see that we see no red whatsoever. All we're seeing is the grey colour that's being set in this BSDF layer up here in the Ref0 channel. So if you think about what a decal is, normally you can't see the base material through a decal. You can only see the colours of that decal itself. So a normal layer blending mode is actually correct. We don't want the decal to mix with what's beneath it. However, obviously at the moment it's covering up the entirety of the base material and that's not something that we want. So we need to be able to go in and tell Maxwell where and where not to add in this new layer group. And to do that, we first need to click on the layer group itself. And then right at the top here, you can see we have this opacity mask setting. Now this is essentially the same as the opacity setting within Photoshop or any other image editing application. And it's gonna be controlling how much this layer group is faded in and faded out within our material. So when this is set to 100, this layer group, layer three, is completely faded in. So we can't see any of the red through it. If I was to set this down to uh, zero, it's going to be completely faded out, and if we render, you can see that it may as well not be present at all within our group. It's, it's not having any effect on our material. All we can see is the red plastic beneath it. So you can kind of see how this is going to be very important when we add a decal. So we're going to be adding a weight map to this opacity setting that's going to go in and tell Maxwell where we want this new layer to be 100% faded in and 100% faded out. So I'm going to set this right back up to 100 and do ourselves a quick re-render to get our gray, uh, gray material swatch in place. And when this is rendered out, I'm just going to store this to give us something to compare to. So I'm going to right click and click store. Then I'm going to go into this texture swatch next to the opacity channel. And we're going to go in and load a new image map. So down the bottom here, I'm going to click on this icon. And you can see that I've just created five images for us to play with. And the first one we want to play with is this dots underscore weight image. So I'm going to click open. And you can see that in its essence, it is just a black and white image. And whether you have uh, the black areas on the image, the opacity is going to be set to zero. Where we have the white areas, the opacity is going to be set to 100%, which is just like the layer masks within Photoshop. Now you can also have grey values in this. A 50% grey value would equate to a 50% opacity. And of course the values in between kind of uh, are on a gradient as well. So with this in place, I'm just going to close this texture group. And I'm going to re-render and hopefully what we'll see, and we have these dots of this layer 3 grey right over the top of this red plastic. So what we're telling layer 3 is to appear where this is white, and we're getting these dots here, and to be completely transparent where we have this black section of the image. And in those completely transparent sections, this layer group may as well not exist at all, and all we're seeing is the red plastic through it. So you can start to see how this is going to be very, very important for decals. So if I now set this uh, layer to dots by double clicking it, what we can do is go in and change the color of these dots. So I'm going to click BSDF, and right now they're taking their grey colour from this reflectance zero channel. So I'm just going to click in there, and I'm going to change this to say a bright orange colour. And then if I re-render, you can see that we're changing the colour of those dots. So we essentially have all of these material settings that are being cut out by this weight map in the layer group. Well, now that we have our decals in place, we want to go in and add in their colour. So I'm going to come down to the BSDF layer. I'm going to come up to Reflectance 0 and click on the texture swatch next to it, and then come down to Load. And I'm going to choose the dots underscore colour.jpg. 
Now you can see that this is essentially the same as the weight map, except in this version we've just got color. So you basically have two versions of the same image, a black and white version for the weight map and a colored version for the reflectance zero channel. So with this in place, if I render now, our decals, in this case the dots, should have the correct color applied to them. And they're obviously still being cut out by that weight map. So that is one way to apply decals in Maxwell. You have two versions of the image. You have one which is a black and white weight map, and you have the other which is the color version which you apply in the reflectance zero channel. There is, however, another way which only uses one image, which is a PNG image, which, as you may or may not know, has embedded alpha information in it, embedded transparency. And Maxwell can use that for both a weight map and a color map. And so we're going to go on and have a look at that now. So say we wanted to add a brand new layer right on top of this dots layer. So I'm going to right click and click add layer. And as you can see, at the start is set to N and we don't have a weight map texture in there. So if I was to render right now, you can see that everything is essentially completely gray. This brand new layer four is covering up everything. It's just painted on top of everything that we had before. So we're going to go in and come up to the opacity mask channel and click on the texture lo loader next to it. I'm going to come down to load and I'm going to choose a PNG image and the one that I'm going to use is this stripes image. So as you can see we have some green stripes in here but they are color they are not black and white and we know that for a weight map we need a black and white image. Well as I said before the PNG actually includes alpha information or transparency information and to get to that we come over to this checkbox and turn on alpha only and what you'll see is that we get the black and white weight map information out of that PNG. So within this one image file, we have both a weight map and a color map that we can use. And other than that, the process is exactly the same. So for the weight map, we want to turn on alpha only so that we get this black and white image. I'm going to let him close that and we're going to render it out. And with that done, as long as we check that alpha only box, we should see some gray stripes sitting on top of our blue dots on top of our red plastic, which echoes the layer groups in this shader tree down here. So we have the stripes on top of the dots on top of the red plastic. Now to add some color to these stripes, I'm going to go into the layer 4 BSDF group. I'm going to come up to our reflectance zero channel and click on the texture loader. And from this right hand drop down, I'm going to choose the same stripes.png image we used for the weight map. So instead of using two maps, one weight map and one color, we can use the same PNG image. Now for the color, we obviously don't want it to be black and white. So we're going to leave alpha only turned off, which is going to extract this color information. Now I'm going to close this window and click render. And we should hopefully see some green stripes on the blue dots on the red plastic. So uh, that's two methods of adding decals, one with two maps and one with one PNG map. And the second one, the one that we used for the stripes, is in fact the one that I use. So whenever I create decals in uh, an image editing program, basically I create them on a transparent background. Um, now that's uh, basically a quick introduction to decals in Maxwell Render. I hope I haven't gone over things too quickly. I realise there are a couple of things in there that I had to miss out due to the time, but if you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to leave me some comments below or uh, over on the Maxwell forums, and I'll hopefully get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, if In the meantime, if you want to ask me any questions on Twitter, I am at Bad Granola. That's B-A-D-G-R-E-N-O-L-A. And until next time, cheers guys.